All right, welcome everyone. Uh, today's topic is Arius Didymus. And um, we're going to talk about who he was and how he influenced the future emperor of uh, the Roman uh, Empire. Uh, my sources today are Ryan's Holiday, Ryan Holiday's book, uh, The Lives of the Stoics, as well as uh, Britannica Encyclopedia and Wikipedia. The, uh, the introduction that I've chosen comes from Ryan's book on Arius Didymus. He says, we know that Arius had come into Octavian's life sometime around the year 44 BC and that he brought his young sons with him. His sons quickly became Octavian's tent companions, according to Suetonius, keeping the boy well-versed in various forms of learning. Indeed, it was uh, through this close relationship that Octavian would learn to read and appreciate the Greek language. Well, in this paragraph, I do wanna note that in the middle there where he says the boy, he is referring to Octavian who was about 19 years old at the time. That was the beginning of Octavian's education. Uh, the overview I'm gonna to give to you is that uh, Arius Didymus is called in this chapter of Lives of the Stoics is called the Kingmaker too, because uh, Athena Doris in the last chapter was Kingmaker and now Arius is also. Both of these uh, Stoics were a big influence on the emperor to be. And most importantly, these were not just uh, philosophical influences, but Stoic influences. So in addition to this, uh, Arius is also going to uh, become a close friend to Octavian and to be a part of his inner circle. Uh, almost uh, like from my perspective, it looks like he almost became a close friend of the family. That's how, how we might call it today. Um, the next item or slide is about the city of Alexandria. Uh, if we fast forward a decade, we'll see that the Roman Civil War was over in 30 BC and the city of Alexandria feared retribution. But Augustus, now the emperor, did two important things. He walked through the city with Arius side by side. And of course, Arius was known as a native of the city. So citizens of Alexandria felt this sentiment and then even further, Octavian gave a speech saying that he would spare the city because it was a beautiful city founded by Alexander the Great. And also he would save the city as a favor to his friend and he motions to Arius. So the people in the city could see the influence that Arius had and how Octavian felt about his friend. In the political landscape, if we go forward a few more years uh, we see that Athena Doris and Arius Didymus are both educating Augustus on philosophy and morality. But in addition, Arius is going to give him some advice on political matters. And this relates to Cleopatra's son. This is the son she had with Caesar. Uh, her son is still alive after the Civil War. His name, by the way, is Caesarian. That's uh, for those of you who want to Google. It's... Um, ending in I-O-N, make sure you spell it that way, because it's very close to the medical term cesarean, which you, of course, have heard of. But um, anyway, advi um, Arius advises Octavian to kill him. And it's because Octavian, I'm sorry, cesarean is an heir to the throne. And also, it could cause, because he's um, still alive, it could cause another civil war. And that could result in great losses. So uh, this is a notable, a notable part of the history. Um, the, the way it turns out is that Cleopatra kills herself in August of 30 BC. And later that same month of August, Octavian has Caesarian killed. And he was only 17 years old at the time. Um, oh, also on the etymology part, uh, for those of you who are interested, where did the medical term Caesarian come from? Well, scholars are kind of um, divided on that. Uh, some people think the medical idea goes back to 700 BC and other people uh, believe it does. It is based on the word Caesar. Um, so there's, there's still some decision to be made there, but it is interesting that in other languages, like even 
uh, Finnish and Korean that the, the medical term Caesarian refers to Caesar, as in Julius Caesar. It's, uh, that's the way it can be translated. All right, the empire is growing. Well, I found a, uh, this map, which is a representation of the Roman Empire about the year 44 BC. Uh, this is before Octavian uh, became the emperor, uh, the emperor Augustus. Um, so it's a little bit before that, but this was the approximate size of the Roman Empire at the time. And it's also interesting to note that when, uh, the, when he became Augustus emperor, there were about 45 million people in the emperor. So it's a very large area, a very large population. In return for all of his advice through the years, Arius is offered to be governor of Egypt, which you, on this map, you could see it in the, it would be in the lower right corner, of course, but Arius refuses. He wants to stay close to the emperor. He wants to continue to be his advisor. And I think that was uh, to have a good effect. Now, moving uh, forward to this item, uh, sometimes we, we know from reading uh, the different uh, texts of, of ancient Stoics, we've heard of the consolation of Helvia, uh, but this is the letter that was written to Empress. And um, uh, Arius is not just a close friend to Augustus, and it, but also he's very close to the family. So as a result, um, Ryan talks about the letter that Arius writes uh, to Livia, and it's about the death of her son, Drusus. Uh, Drusus uh, is, is someone I didn't know very much about uh, in history, but apparently he was a general who was very much involved with the military campaigns in the Germanic tribes, uh, very active in the military, like between 12 and 9 AD. And then what happens is in the year nine, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, nine BC, uh, nine BC is when Drusus dies. He's supposedly in battle. Uh, he's uh, near the river Elba somewhere. He's thrown off of his horse and he's injured very badly. And within a month, he's going to uh, die. And so as a result, Livia gets news of this and um, uh, Arius does is he writes a letter to console her. Uh, Ryan even quotes a part of this letter in the chapter. He says, do not give way, but rather plant yourself firmly and endure whatever burden may fall upon you from above. Oh, scared, though you may have been at the first roar of the tempest. Now the Stoics, of course, then and now uh, have realized that the loss of someone, especially someone close to you is a great burden. But if you grieve for a long period of time, what a Stoic believes is that you're ruining the good memories of the person that has passed away. And also, you're doing a disservice to those people who are still alive because you're bringing them all down with negative emotions. So uh, I would normally compare this to something in modern Stoicism, but uh, that basic teaching is already there. And I'm glad to say that in our society in general, we also have a new custom, a relatively new custom where Funerals are now called celebrations of life. So that I think is a, a positive change. Okay, the four virtues. This is something that Arius taught. And more interestingly, he was developing Stoicism in his time. He was trying to create a framework around these four virtues, the four main virtues. And we're gonna go through these descriptions which are in Ryan's book, uh, the Lives of the Stoics. The first one, uh, he describes wisdom as the knowledge of what things must be done and what must not be done. We'll find virtuous qualities like soundness of judgment, circumspection, shrewdness, sensibleness, soundness of aim, and ingenuity. Uh, the next one is self-control. It's the knowledge of what things are worth choosing and what are worth avoiding. Contained within this virtue are things like orderliness, propriety, modesty, and self-mastery. I think that's, he covers a lot in a short paragraph there. Now, the other two are justice and bravery. Justice is the knowledge of apportioning each person and situation 
of what is due. Under this banner, Stoics place piety, giving gods their due, kindness, good fellowship, and fair dealing. And finally, bravery includes perseverance, intrepidness, great-heartedness, stout-heartedness, and one of Arius' most favored virtuous qualities, industriousness. I like this section of the chapter because um, Ryan covers each of these points very well. However, he does make a kind of a vague uh, description at the end. He says that people are divided into wise people and fools, and he doesn't go into it too deeply. I think <laughs> that uh, uh, that was a little abstract, and I didn't get much practical knowledge out of that. But therefore, I'd like to accentuate these uh, four vir virtues. Now, to wrap up, uh, following virtue is something that Stoics are still doing today, of course. It's one of the primary things we do. And um, uh, if we look back on this time with Arius Didymus, we can tell that his advice to the emperor, Augustus, was very important. Um, Augustus was not an evil emperor like Nero, uh, and yet he didn't have the serene moments of Marcus Aurelius, so he was kind of in the middle somewhere. Uh, he was a work in progress, much like all of us, and I think he benefited from his Stoic teachers, Athenodorus and Arius Didymus. I think he used their teachings to improve himself over time. He practiced self-control. Uh, he practiced the four virtues that we just read through. And I think that um, what Arius would have wanted us today, if Arius could give us some advice today, I think it would be that he would want us to work on our talents, not just the four virtues by themselves, but what are our talents or gifts uh, that we've been just given by nature? You know, the things that sometimes we're drawn to or that we do with so much love. I think this is something that the American transcendentalists, Emerson and Thoreau, also referred to, is that in the 1800s, that we should develop our talents and give something back to society. So I think it's easy to... Um, uh, to live spontaneously sometimes, but if we can work a little harder, we can uh, focus on these virtues. Uh, we can also develop our natural talents, and um, we, can we can achieve uh, some sense of greatness if we are following virtue. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel to hear about new videos. Follow us on social media for more info. Visit stoicdan.com.